What's up YouTube? This new hotfix made my injured Bulwark Druid build much stronger than before, with my maximum barrier almost doubling from about 8,000 to over 15,000. This build is so tanky that when I went to test it on Lilith, I killed her by accident, and I don't even know the mechanics of phase 2. I'll be linking the kill video down below the like button along with my other earthen bulwark guides for leveling and progressing through the end game. Hotfix 1.1.2 changed all barriers in the game so that their maximum health is based off your character's max health. I doubt this change was intended and Blizzard could change it back at any time. You can figure out your barrier cap mathematically by following this formula or experimentally by going into the game and casting your earthen bulwark and checking the actual barrier amount. If your barrier amount is equal to your max life, you can try using fortitude potions and or swap the deer spirit boon to the plus 14% health to try and increase your maximum life to see where your actual barrier cap is. Ideally you want to rank 12 earth and bulwark, as much barrier generation as possible, and then the minimum HP required to surpass your barrier cap. For example, I have 100.7% barrier generation, so my barrier cap is 15,100. My goal is to have a little more HP than that. Ranks of Earth and Bulwark and Ranks 12 defensive skills on our chest and amulet respectively are extremely important now to scale the maximum health of our barrier. Barrier generation is even more important than before because now it directly influences your barrier cap. Maximum life is very important until you get your HP above your barrier cap. I recommend trying to pick it up on your rings and then also on your helmet if necessary. My Paragon setup is mostly the same as it was in my leveling guide, so I won't walk through it all again, but I did take out 3 points from damage nodes and put them into health nodes to help reach the HP requirement for the barrier. I also swapped Fang and Claw for Werewolf here for extra damage reduction, but these are interchangeable and you could swap back to Fang and Claw if you'd prefer the extra damage. I changed my Spirit Bond to the Deer so that I could run the 14% health and the 10% attack speed, However, I had to drop Pack Leader to do this. This is a very tanky setup, but it does sacrifice some damage since we get the 20% bonus crit much less often. You can drop the 14% health boon and keep Pack Leader if you get max life on your chest and pants or by using a Fortitude Elixir. I recommend you gem your armor with diamonds because barrier generation is what determines your max barrier. You're better off getting life from Rings, Helm, or Paragon. I recommend you run the Barber for your Wrathful Heart, and I prefer a 4 second version. While we do run the Exploit Glyph, this is mostly for the vulnerable damage, and we don't really care about the proc, since we have near 100% vulnerable uptime thanks to Stormstrike. A longer Barber means a bigger multiplier, and more time to catch smaller Barber explosions on elites and bosses for more overall damage. We run Tempting Fate because we still crit a lot even without Poison Creeper, and the Barber hits always crit. I swapped Revenge for Prudent, since Revenge only seems to work when our barrier is down and Prudent feels better in that situation. There's a second version of this build that runs the Earth Guard aspect and gets as much max life as possible. I think Rubies will likely be optimal here, but it'll depend on your level and gear. This build drops some DR stats, but can create some massive barriers to brute force most nightmare dungeons. The main problem with the setup is its inconsistency. It won't work as well single target or against bosses, so I prefer my more versatile setup. However, I will include a second build planner with this version for you guys to play around with. 